Hello, this is Sims Art. The Other Falling in the Blue, currently published on Webtoon. Today I'm going to show you how to create a webcomic from scratch. In the last video, I showed you how I set a new document and how I start sketching the panels. In this video, I'm going to show you how I ink the panels to create clean and easy to color pictures. Inking is a crucial segment of the process. There are numerous ways of inking, and each one has a specific purpose. For my project, I like to use a sleek and clean line art that helps me to increase the production speed and produce bold and iconic designs. Having a crisp line art helps during the coloring process as well, as I will show in the next video when we will color. We will discuss about inking, what brushes I use, what is a draft layer, what are blending modes, what is the layer's hierarchy and folders, and how to use the fill subtool. Let's talk about the brushes. For this task, I crafted a custom-made brush that allows me to create sharp lines with almost no anti-aliasing. The reason behind this choice lies in the necessity of having the sharpest line possible. Webtoon projects can't use a high-resolution file. The files would be very heavy otherwise. So I need a line that is sharp from the get-go, without any compression or sharpening. I also decided to activate a very useful tool called Stabilization, in order to have more regular shapes easier, especially when it comes to large curves or very straight lines. Before I start inking, I like to turn the sketch layer into a draft layer. This allows Clip Studio Paint to ignore it during the process. You will still see it, but in order to select it, it's important to click on the layer while the shortcuts will not have effect. It also helps when exporting because in Clip Studio Paint, it's possible to export a file ignoring all the draft layers. So there's no reason to worry that in the final piece, the sketch will show up by mistake. In addition to this, I set the layer blending mode to multiply. This helps me to see clearly the lines that I'm drawing and later on the colors. I like to keep the sketch layer on top and not leave it on the bottom of the layer group because during any phase of the process, I want to be able to turn on and off the sketch and see it in overlay on the whole picture and figure out if the final piece is representing the original sketch as much as possible or if I forgot details during the process. I finally used the layer color effect on the sketch so I can easily separate it from the line art and have a clear vision of the line art while working on it. Once the sketch layer has been set, I start inking on a normal layer placed right under the sketch. On some panels, I like to use multiple layers for the line art. In order to simplify the color process and to have an easy visualization of the different planes of the line art. Each line art layer is often placed in the same folder called ink, and I use different colors for the same panel lines so that I will be able to recognize where I use more than a single line art layer when it's time to color. For my drawing style, I don't use a lot of negative spaces. Usually my line art is very light and it will gain more solidity through the color process. But sometimes some parts like eyes or deep shadows has to be filled. Instead of coloring them with the brush, I like to quickly switch to the fill subtool and fill the area with a flat color. Usually I turn on the close gap option in order to avoid looking for open shapes. Clip Studio Paint will recognize the open shape and automatically will only fill the area inside the shape you want, closing it automatically. Once the inking is over, 
I export the project and send it for another review before coloring. We will discuss about coloring in the next video. I hope you'll find this information useful and for any question, leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you can find more about my work on Instagram, Twitter and YouTube. See you next time.